everybody in the chat room or on paulradio.com. And those of us at ronpaultribune.com, just click on the voice chat room and you can see us there. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, let's see here. Anon 8084 in the chat room on Ron Paul Radio says, So Texans have voted for a guy that will take away their guns. The American masses have got to be the dumbest on the planet. Well, anybody who voted for Romney in Texas, I totally agree. You're right. <clears throat> but I don't necessarily believe that they voted for Romney. And that's just me. I'm not trying to uh, be whine about it or cry about it and, and, and call fraud or we got cheated every single time. I'm not saying Ron Paul would win every, every single state legitimately. But I do know one thing. There is no way a moderate from Massachusetts flip-flopping Mitt Romney is going to beat Ron Paul in his own home state. It's crazy. It's why the media don't want to spend too much time talking about these things that don't add up because they know once they start digging into it that people watching TV are going to question themselves about these numbers because it's fishy. It doesn't make any sense how Ron Paul could lose to Mitt Romney in Texas. And like Anon just said, a guy that's going to take away your guns, that's what they want in Texas? Think not. Okay, so before the break, we were talking about Governor Bob McDonald of Virginia says it would be great to have drones flying over Virginia. He cites the battlefield success. Okay, Uh, so I played the clip before the break, but it looks like it was a clip of the whole interview that he had. And I thought it was just the part about drones. So I uh, I don't know how long into the interview it is. So I'm just going to go off the article here. It says police drones flying over Virginia would be great and the right thing to do for the same reasons they are so effective in a battlefield environment. The state's chief executive said Tuesday, of course, it's effective. We're just killing kids and blowing up buildings and innocent civilians. But it's great. Uh, let's see here. Bob McDonald, a retired U.S. Army lieutenant, uh, lieutenant uh, said he, he is open to any technology that makes law enforcement more productive. The use of drones, which was recently endorsed by the police chiefs of Fairfax County and D.C., would make better use of valuable police resources. Increased safety and reduced manpower are among the reasons the U.S. military and intelligence community use drones on battlefield, which is why it should be considered in Virginia, he says. You, you hear that? Increased safety and reduced manpower. Because you know there's a lot of men and military men that are not going to do the things that the drones will. Okay? You can't get a bunch of uh, uh, Americans to to turn on Americans and arrest us and and probably start shooting us and killing us out here in the American streets. So let's get some some drones so they can do it. We'll take care of the Middle East. We'll bomb people there. And we'll get the drone to do a U-turn, come right back to America, and do it right there to us. That's what's happening. It's all turning on us. Let's see. Quote, it's great, he said while speaking on WTOP's Ask the Governor program. If you're keeping police officers safe, making it more productive, and saving money, it's absolutely the right thing to do. No mention about the Constitution. No mention about our rights. You know, is it legal? A proposal to, pr- to pr- purchase drones hasn't yet reached his desk, he says. But state law enforcement agencies are looking for the most current ways to fight crime. Uh, let's see here. Quote, drone, uh, this is the sentiment was echoed last month by David Rower, chief of police for Fairfax County, one of the state's most affluent areas. Quote, drones will certainly have a purpose and a reason to be in this region in the next coming years, he told WTOP. Quote, just as a standpoint, as an alternative for spotting traffic and sending information back on our VDOT smart traffic centers and being able to observe backups. You know, it's so amazing. The government act like they care about our safety so much. We just care about you guys so much. We just care about the kids so much. We want to take care of everybody so much that we got to take your rights from you. You know, that we got officers that will kill you, no gun on you, innocent, nothing happens to them. But, But, hey, we got to protect the police even more. We got to give them more power. D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier, a national security expert, told WTOP in early May that the use of drones is ideal for a sprawling county, such as Fairfax. (laughs) Let's see here. Unmanned aerial aircrafts were first proven in combat environments over Afghanistan and Iraq as a part of the military and CIA presence there. Police forces in Arizona first employed them domestically to help monitor illegal immigration and trade over the U.S.-Mexican border. Okay, so you see, we're going to start with the drones in the Middle East, then we're going to start the drones on our border, and now we're going to start them inside the states of the United States. Next thing you know, they're going to be in your neighborhoods, you're going to walk outside, and you're going to accidentally, 
you know, it's going to be like a bee flying around. Instead of bees flying around, you're going to see drones flying around. <laughs> oh, man. Except the, dr- the drones ain't going to sting you. They're going to shoot you. The Federal Aviation Administration released a list in April of agencies and organizations currently cleared to use drones. And I reported on this back in April. Which includes Virginia Tech, Virginia Commonwealth University has been cleared, but its permit has expired. Drones over U.S. soil has turned some heads in Congress. Yeah, well, it's doing more than that with the American people. I mean, those of us that know about it, this, this, is, uh, this is ludicrous. I, I cannot believe, I, I can't even fathom the thought of how this could be legal or how this is okay that someone can just fly a robot plane somewhere push a button and just murder people and not be held accountable and no one get in trouble innocent people get killed and and what so we're sending foreign aid to these foreign countries their people isn't getting the money they aren't they aren't getting their rights their rights are being taken away and they're being killed by our drones civilians babies kids and we're not being it's not being reported really we're not being told about it. I don't see the faces and the names of these people that are being killed. So it's amazing. Uh, let's see. This is out at PressTV.ir. NATO's death squads responsible for Hula massacre. Maybe we'll play this uh, this uh, interview later on in the show. Don't forget that I'm on at 3 p.m. Eastern time every day. Uh, Monday through Friday, 10 to 12 noon Eastern Time and 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on RonPaulRadio.com. So, yeah, we might. Uh, this is a little interview with the transcript, uh, uh, interviewing Tarpley and uh, how the West is behind the death squads in uh, Syria. <clears throat> and a lot of us can believe this. I'm not really surprised. We know that America wants regime change everywhere. We got to be in power or, or else, you know, we got to come and take it over. It, it, it's really crazy. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have going on in the headlines? We might play that clip later. Uh, Pentagon. This is out of Russia today. U.S. should enhance Asia Pacific military role. U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said America needs to increase its military role in the Asian Pacific. Uh, restating Washington's concern over the reality of China's rapidly developing military influence. Quote, that reality is inescapable of our country and for our military, which has already begun broadening and deepening our engagement through the Asia Pacific, Panetta said. On the eve of an international peace summit scheduled to kick off in Singapore on June 1st, Panetta addressed graduates of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. The defense secretary called the Asia Pacific one of the key projects for future American manners. Quote, your change is to help ensure the peace and prosperity of the Asia-Pacific region for the 21st century, Panetta said. We need you to project America's power and reflect America's character to serve on ships and submarines, to fly planes and to train and operate throughout the region. Panetta echoed Barack Obama's words at an Australian summit last November when the president announced plans to increase American military presence in the region by 2017. Obama called Asia-Pacific a top priority, stressing that the U.S., was here to stay really obama it's so amazing i wish you would have said these things when you were campaigning in 2008 2007 boy stopping the war stopping what wars you just want to spread more troops around and keep them there now you're signing deals with afghanistan till what 2024 it's ridiculous man uh right here government on cnn talking about spending 3.5 billion dollars in california on a high-speed rail to nowhere not only is it a waste of time to be a waste of money on that, it's a waste of time to be talking about it. Anyways, I'm your host, Paco. This is Occupy the Media. We'll be back after the break.